This is part 1 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is jQuery and why should we use jQuery. So what's jQuery? jQuery is not a new programming language. jQuery is built on top of JavaScript. In fact, jQuery is a lightweight JavaScript library that simplifies programming with JavaScript. According to jQuery.com website, jQuery is a fast, small, and feature-rich JavaScript library. It makes things like HTML document traversal and manipulation, event handling, animation, and AJAX much simpler with an easy-to-use API that works across a multitude of browsers. With a combination of versatility and extensibility, jQuery has changed the way that millions of people write JavaScript. We already have JavaScript, so why should we use jQuery? Or what are the advantages of using jQuery over raw JavaScript? One of the greatest benefits of using jQuery is that it is cross-browser. Meaning, when we write JavaScript using jQuery, we don't have to worry about, is this code going to work in IE7? Is it going to work in Google Chrome? Is it going to work in Safari? We don't have to worry about all those browser compatibility issues. All that is taken care by jQuery for us. So when we write JavaScript using jQuery, we can be assured that it is going to work across all browsers. So the greatest advantage of jQuery is that it is cross-browser. jQuery is a lot more easy to use than raw JavaScript. We'll look at examples of using jQuery in our upcoming videos and you will realize how easy it is to achieve that using jQuery over using raw JavaScript. jQuery is extensible jQuery simplifies and has rich AJAX support. In our upcoming videos, we'll see how to implement AJAX using jQuery, and along the way, we'll see how simple it is. jQuery has large development community and many, many free plugins. For example, within your application, if you want to implement autocomplete text box, you can either write code for that from scratch, or you can use one of the free jQuery plugin that is readily available a plugin that is already developed, tested, and proven to be working. So when you have a plugin like that, why do you want to reinvent the wheel? Why do you want to invest the time and effort to do the same thing again? Instead, simply use that free plugin that's available. There are many, many such free plugins available. And there is excellent documentation on jQuery.com website. In our upcoming videos, we'll see how to use the documentation. Now let's see how to use jQuery in our application. Now, to use jQuery within your application, all you'll have to do is navigate to jQuery.com website, download the relevant jQuery file, and reference that just like any other JavaScript file within your application. So, when we navigate to jQuery.com, notice that we have this Download jQuery button. Once we click on that, we go to the Download page, and notice on this page we've got two versions of jQuery jQuery 1.x and jQuery 2.x. So, what is the difference between jQuery 1.x and 2.x. If you want to support Internet Explorer 6, 7, and 8 versions, then use jQuery 1.x. Whereas if you don't have the need to support IE 6, 7, and 8, and if you want to target just the modern browsers, then use this jQuery 2.x. The size of jQuery 2.x is smaller than jQuery 1.x because all that backward compatibility code has been stripped off from jQuery 2.x. So this tends to be a little leaner than jQuery 1.x. And if you look at either of them, notice that we have a compressed and an uncompressed versions. And if you look at this compressed version, notice that you know all the white spaces have been removed, variable names have been shortened to keep the size of this file small. So this minified or compressed version is suitable for production use. Whereas if you look at this uncompressed version, you know, this piece of code is much readable because we have the white spaces and meaningful uh, variable names are used. Now we require this for development because if there are issues, we want to be in a position to read this JavaScript and we want to be in a position to debug it. So for development, use the uncompressed version. For production, we usually use this minified or compressed version. So I have already downloaded you know, both this jQuery 1.x and jQuery 2.x files. And let's see how to use them in our application. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So here, I have a button control. Now what we want to do is um, 
assign a click event handler to this button. First let's do that using raw JavaScript and then we'll see how to rewrite the same thing using jQuery. So vendor.onload so when onload event fires we want to execute this function so basically what we want to do is document or get element by ID we want to get this element which has an ID of button 1 dot and to that button we want to add an event listener and if you look at this add event listener method it has got three parameters the first parameter is the type of the event so the type of the event is click and the second parameter is the event listener method so first let's go ahead and write a function let's call this click handler and all this function is going to do is alert a message saying jQuery tutorial so the second parameter for add event listener method is going to be the function the event handler function and the third parameter is a boolean parameter use capture uh, this parameter is rarely used and I'm going to set that to false all right if you look at this add event listener method this is not supported in IE8 and earlier versions so this piece of code is not going to work in IE8 and earlier versions let's look at that in action so let's run this now so at the moment my default browser is Google Chrome so this works in Google Chrome look at this when we click the button we get the alert but let's navigate to this URL within IE So at the moment, the version of IE that I have is IE 11. So when I click this, it works in IE 11. But let's change uh, the browser mode to IE 7 by launching the developer tools. So let's change the mode to IE 7. And look at this. The moment we do that, we get a message saying that uh, this add event listener property or method is not supported. Right? So with IE8 and earlier versions we have to use a different method which is attach event so we have to first check if document dot add event listener if this method is supported then do this if that is not supported then we know that the browser is either IE8 or earlier versions in that case we want to use document or get element by ID instead of add event listener we are going to use attach event function and with attach event you know you have to use the on prefix with the event name so if it's click event you have to specify on click and then the event handler function we don't require this third parameter with attach event alright so let's save these changes let's uh, reload in IE so at the moment we are running in IE 11 mode it works now let's change the browser mode to IE 7 and look at this we don't get the JavaScript error so if we click this button we should get the alert jQuery tutorial okay so at the moment it's working across all browsers but look at the amount of code that we have to write here okay just to add a click even handler to this button control this is the amount of code we have to write now let's see how to rewrite the same thing using jQuery so we have to reference the jQuery file since we want to support IE 8 and earlier versions I am actually going to use jQuery 1.x within my application let's actually copy both of them and paste them within our project so let's paste them here so they are added to our root directory so let's drag and drop them within the head section so I am adding a reference to 1.x file because we want to support IE 8 and earlier versions as well alright so instead of all this we're going to use jQuery now now look at this as we have added that 
you know they should be a jQuery function now. So jQuery to this we pass the document object and then we call ready function. So what is this ready function going to do? It's going to ensure that the DOM is fully loaded. So the browser document object model is fully loaded and you know the script can start modifying uh, the elements if required. Okay, so dot ready and this is where we write our JavaScript. So we want to execute a function just like how we did with window.onload. Okay, so we're going to open a bracket. So here we have an anonymous function that we want to execute when the document object model is fully loaded. So jQuery, we are passing the document object to the jQuery function and then we are calling the ready method. This ready method will ensure that the DOM is fully loaded and the script can start uh, modifying the elements within the DOM. Okay, so what do we want to do here? We want to attach event handler to this button control. So jQuery. Now, you know, in raw JavaScript to get a reference of this button, we use document dot get element by ID. Now, I want to get this element by ID with jQuery. We use something called ID selector. We'll discuss more about selectors in our upcoming video. For now, understand that you know, hash button one. This is equivalent to saying document dot get element by ID button one. Okay, so hash symbol here in jQuery is called as ID selector. So we want to get an element with the ID button one. That's what this piece of code says. And then when the click event occurs on this button control, we want to execute some piece of code and we're going to specify that using an anonymous function. So I want to execute a function. Then we end that with a semicolon. And here we specify uh, you know, what we want to do when that click event occurs on that button control. So all we want to do is alert a message saying jQuery tutorial. Alright, so look at the amount of code that we have to write with jQuery. Now let's go ahead, save this, and run it. So when we click this, we should get that message jQuery tutorial. Now let's go ahead and check if this is going to work in IE as well. So let's fire up Internet Explorer and let's navigate to the same page. Click the button, it works. Now let's change the browser mode to IE7. And let's click this button notice that it works. Now it's working in IE7 here because if you look at the jQuery we are using it's jQuery 1.x so IE6, 7 and 8 all these versions are supported. Now let's actually um, remove this and instead use jQuery 2.x. Remember with jQuery 2.x we will not have support for IE8 and earlier versions. So let's close that, save the changes, fire up IE, let's change the browser mode to IE7 and let's navigate to this URL. So let's copy that and let's navigate to that URL and look at that we get an error okay so if you want to target IE8 and earlier versions as well then use jQuery 1.x but if you don't want to target them and just want to target IE9 and later versions and the other modern browsers then use jQuery 2.x versions so with raw JavaScript, this is the amount of code that we have to write to attach a click event handler to the button control. But with jQuery, this is the amount of code. Now look at the you know how less the code is. 
and we don't have to worry about cross-browser issues because all that is taken care by jQuery for us. And here we have some important points to remember. Now here notice that we're using jQuery, you know, um, as the name of the function. Instead of that, you know, we have dollar in jQuery. Okay, so this dollar is shortcut for jQuery. Okay, so you can either use dollar or jQuery, whatever you prefer. Uh, commonly, most people use dollar and this ready function ensures that the DOM is fully loaded and our script can start manipulating the elements within DOM. And look at this, to, you know, to ensure that the DOM is fully loaded, we have to write dollar, we pass, you know, to that function, jQuery function, we pass the document object, and on that, we call the ready function. We can either write all these, okay, or if you look at, you know, we have three lines here, all these three are equivalent. At the moment, we're using this syntax, dollar, we're passing the document object, and on that, we are calling the ready function. You can either do that, or you can do this, you know, without passing the document object, you can simply call the ready method, so something like this. So I can get rid of that, save this, and look at this, reload this, click the button, it should still work. But the second option is not really recommended. Uh, you can use the third option as well, which is even shorter. So to the dollar, you know, to the jQuery function, you just specify the handler that you want to execute. So I can get rid of all this together. So now, within this parenthesis, we specify the handler that we want to execute an anonymous function and what this function says is find a button with ID button 1 and then when the click event occurs execute this piece of code okay look at how small the code is with jQuery thank you for listening and have a great day